Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to yet another episode of Little Modular. It has been a while since my last video due to different life circumstances, but I'm back with a bunch of new modules and uh, I will be reviewing some other modules from time to time, not as often as I used to, but uh, I will get back to you. So today we have a really nice bunch of different modules from the feedback uh, modules. And uh, before we start, just a little um, disclaimer. This video is sponsored by feedback modules. They have sent me all of those modules in return for the review, but they have no uh, influence on what I'm saying. It's a quite a colorful bunch. Uh, we have a classical 106 chorus, which is a recreation of the famous Roland Uno chorus. Um, we have the envelope 310, envelope 100. Then we have a compressor, squeeze, as QZ. And then we have a LFO. In this video, I will focus on the envelopes and the LFO because it's really, really simple and uh, there will be no sense describing it in a separate video. So uh, let's start with the envelope 310. This is based on, uh, on a modern chip, which is a recreation of the classical CEM3310 chip, which was widely used in the uh, classical legendary uh, poly and mono synths from the 80s. And uh, as with most of the uh, feedback modules recreations, it has some really nice twists to it. So uh, let's see what it is and what are the controls on the panel. First of all, right here at the top, we have the gate input, where you input the gate, yeah. Then we have a manual gate right here, so we can just trigger it with your fingers. And you can see there is a really nice icon below, a LED, which shows you the activity of uh, the envelope. Below is a really nice thing, which is an extra trigger input, which allows you to re-trigger um, the envelope while it's triggered by the gate, so we can achieve some simultaneous multi-trigger peaks and uh, it sounds really fun, which I'll show you in a second. Below you have a switch, which allows you to change the response of the envelope. We have the normal, uh, damp and auto. Normal is what it says it is, a classical typical ADSR. Then we have a damp, which is a recreation of a piano dampening thing. It's just like a different response of the envelope. And then we have the auto mode, which makes the envelope to go through the full cycle, regardless of the uh, uh, gate length, which is present here. So three different modes, which alter the behavior of uh, the envelope. And then we have, of course, four pots for the attack, decay, sustain and release segments. And below here is the envelope output. And as an extra bonus, there is also inverted output, which you could use, for instance, with some filters or whatever. Um, so yeah, let's see how it sounds. Um, it's quite snappy. I like the response of it. Uh, but yeah, I have a super simple arrangement here, which is Intelligent Rubicon going through the uh, Corgasmatron filter and uh, this one goes to the VCA, which is then mm, triggered by uh, this envelope. So, as I have shown you before, you can trigger the envelope here and adjust the uh, time. Okay, right here. It has a pretty, pretty wide range from super clicky and percussive. Okay, as you can hear. To some standard, typical synthesizer range times. So it's really useful, I would say, and quite a flexible and simple. Okay, what I really love about feedback modules 
is that they make simple modules so you don't have to dive through all the menus it's all analog or old school and I like it that way all right so I won't be pushing the button because I'm already tired uh, I have a gate from Erica Sin's black sequencer which has a different gate lengths so we can see how it responds to different gate lengths yeah and let's see how it works yeah I have to press play here and yeah let's go to the normal mode first okay gonna hear the last note is a longer gate so it holds the release is longer sustain well it's not you know it's nothing much to explain a typical envelope fast flexible me like it but we also have the uh, dump which just acts a bit differently it is meant to be mimicking the piano dampening thing and it's called ADRR here I really like the snappiness of these envelopes Now the last mode, it's called auto, which means the uh, the gate length doesn't matter anymore. It will just output whatever you set here with the knobs, regardless of the gate length. In some specific cases, it might just make your life easier. So that's a plus always. Okay. Now we also have this intriguing trig input which allows you to just animate the whole thing with some extra triggers so what I have here is a simple pattern from my uh, Metron sequencer and okay it's all synchronized with the same clock so it sounds nice and you can hear we're getting some extra spikes let's try some other modes yeah and it behaves a bit differently in the damp mode it reminds me of the uh, Atom TM tunes you know Uwe Schmidt when you listen to his music you have those super snappy really bright sounds and I could imagine using this kind of envelope if you want to achieve a similar snappy almost like electrical you know zaps and uh, yeah really nice Let's switch to the uh, normal. Yeah, it just makes it more fun. And the envelope is not as simple anymore as it seems. As you can hear, you can achieve different patterns, of course, depending on what you input here and here so yeah so that's pretty much it nothing much more to say the inverted output right here as I said before could be used with some filter for instance so let's go to the envelope 100 right now this is a legendary thing from the 80s also I think it's based on the Roland system 100 
and uh, the manual claims that it's the fastest envelope on the market. Uh, I haven't tested all of the envelopes, obviously, that are present on the market, but I would say that yeah, it's damn fast. So uh, let's 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 check it. Let's see how fast it is. So just like in case of the uh, 310, it has really similar set of controls. Gate input right here, manual trigger. Then we have ADSR controls, and there is this uh, this really nice LED. Same one is here, and we have also the output and the inverted output. Uh, but we have two ranges that can be set here: uh, a fast range and a slow range. And depending on the range chosen here, you have different times for uh, all the parameters here, which you can see up here in the graphic, which was taken from the manual. Uh, yeah, let's hear it. Let's maybe input some gate right here. So I have connected the simple trigger from Metron. And you can barely notice a super fast click. Let's adjust the decay. Let's give it more sustain. Yeah, so we have like a finer resolution in the fast mode. It's really fast. Now let's switch to the uh, slow and it behaves more like a typical envelope. So I would imagine if if you want to design some typical synth sounds, then the slow mode would be the one to choose. And for some percussive sounds, zaps, and other crazy fast things, I would go with the uh, with the first mode, with the fast mode. And again, the simplicity of this is what I really love about it. Not to mention that these are really cheap. Let's see what the LFO here is about. Because it's a super simple thing. Here you have a rate. So how fast the LFO cycles. Below you have the low and high. As you can hear, I'm modulating the uh, cutoff frequency on the filter. And you have two ranges. You can see what the ranges are in the graphic. And then we have the waveform, which changes the uh, shape of both of the uh, wave outputs, so the square and the, the triangle right here. And you don't have a control over separate outs. Whatever you change here, you change for both outputs. So it's not flexible really, but it's not meant to be a flexible and super, you know, pumped LFO. It's just a simple LFO which is based on the famous MS monophonic synthesizer from the 70s. Probably the Korg MS-20, I think. So, yeah, I like the LEDs here, which show you the uh, activity of the LFO. Below two outputs. Yep, that's it. That's the whole story behind the LFO. So, if you are looking for inexpensive and solid envelopes and LFOs, well, I would definitely take a peek at those. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time. If you liked that video, if you found it useful, please like and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye. Stay healthy.